Welcome to the lab for module 1 where we're going to look at completing the fabric for a virtual machine environment. In this lab we'll look at the scenario where we'll look at an existing virtualization environment with a single Hyper-V host and virtual machine management server. We'll then prepare the fabric in virtual machine management server for additional workloads that will be managed for the Adatum organization in the future. Add another Hyper-V host to virtual machine manager and configure the host groups. Having opened up the Hyper-V Manager, as you can see, we have our single host. Uh, we have a set of virtual machines that we have access to. So the first thing we're going to do is actually go to the top level properties and we're actually going to add another host. So we're going to introduce LUN host 2 into our Hyper-V Manager so we can manage our two Hyper-V hosts from a single location. You can see that host 2 has no virtual machines on it at this time. We will provision additional machines during the course of the lab exercises view the configuration of host 1. First of all we can see for the switch configuration uh, we have a single external switch called LS Management. This switch uh, has been created by Virtual Machine Manager and we'll see how the configuration of that works later on. If we actually go into the settings of a virtual machine, so we'll just look at our uh, domain controller, we can see this the, the configuration of the virtual machine is, is pretty straightforward, nothing too special, uh, single processor, uh, 512 megabytes of memory but we can actually see this virtual machine, same as all the other virtual machines, are actually bound to that LS management switch that we've just had a look at. If we then look at the Hyper-V settings, within the Hyper-V settings we can actually see features like live migration are not enabled, storage migration is set to the default value of 2, and the Hyper-V replica settings have, have not been enabled at this time. This configuration should represent uh, the configuration that we have on, on both the hosts at this moment in time. So again, if we just review the Hyper-V settings for host 2, we should actually see exactly the same configuration. Going back to host 1 and looking at the configuration of one of the virtual machines, if we look at the configuration of the virtual machine from the point of view of storage, you will actually see that the storage for the virtual machines is currently sitting on drive D. At this precise moment, again, we are not using any form of uh, SAN based storage or SMB based storage. It's all local storage as far as the virtual machines are concerned and Hyper-V is concerned. So having reviewed the configuration inside Hyper-V, Let's go and have a look at the configuration from the point of view of Virtual Machine Manager and specifically add that second host in, into the system. So we can see under the All Host group we currently have the LAN Host 1 system. So we're just going to add in our second machine. So the first thing we need to do is specify credentials that allow us to deploy some software and bring the machine under control. So this doesn't need to have local administrative power. So we're using a predefined Run As account. We've just typed in part of the name, so LUN, and using the Active Directory Discovery feature. So the system's going out and inquiring against all the machines that start with the name LUN effectively, uh, or have the lame, lame name LUN attached to them, so uh, the virtual machine cluster does. And we can see host 2 there, and we're going to bring host 2 under management. So we've selected it, and we just get to select the host group, which we're going to leave in the all host group for this moment, to bring the machine under management. So the jobs window pops up and we can see the job running. So I'm just going to clear the tick to stop the jobs window popping up anymore and actually go down to the jobs panel. So we can actually see the uh, virtual machine host being added. So we can see we're in the phase we're actually installing the virtual machine manager agent. Um, the the ma agent obviously allows virtual machine manager to talk to the Hyper-V host, but it also allows the Hyper-V host to initiate communication back to the the virtual machine manager. For example, if you actually make a change like um, migrate a virtual machine, then that allows the agent to actually proactively tell virtual machine manager that th that virtual machine has been migrated to another host. So this shouldn't take too long to actually complete the activity, so we'll just wait a moment while we're waiting for the agent to finish deploying. So we can see the agent is almost finished now. Uh, we've actually configured the deployment. So we're now just going through the refresh phase. So the refresh phase effectively enables us to uh, pull back the configuration of the host 
and then we can actually start to uh, refresh the configuration of the virtual machines as well. You'll also notice in the middle there, there's actually an option that says Enable Hyper-V. If this host didn't have Hyper-V installed on it, then Virtual Machine Manager would have installed that as well. Also see that I get a warning regarding a restart for Multipath I.O. Um, so that's just so that we can claim any SAM based storage. So I'm just going to select the host from within Virtual Machine Manager and initiate the restart from here. So I don't need to go to the physical machine. Um, I don't need to jump out to some other utility. I can actually initiate the restart directly from within Virtual Machine Manager. Obviously due to the uh, time that, you know, BIOS and all those other bits and pieces take to uh, uh, evaluate a machine. Obviously, the restart will take a little while, so we'll just jump straight to uh, the restart completing. So, as we can see, just reviewing the job, the restart's complete. There's effectively no status information, but the virtual, mach uh, the, the virtual machine host has been restarted, and we've now addressed all the requirements for bringing that machine under management and ensuring that the multipath for provisioning SAM based storage is going to work correctly. So just jumping out to Explorer we're going to just quickly go and have a look at a script file, a PowerShell script which will allow us to make some changes. Now we're actually going to make these changes within Virtual Machine Manager but just by looking at the script we can see what we're going to try and achieve and therefore understand how we could have achieve the same results using a script. So the steps we're going to perform are effectively to move the virtual uh, virtual machine hosts from one host group to another. So we're actually going to take the uh, virtual machines and move them into a group called Contoso. So that's the next procedure. So on the VMs and services panel we're just going to right click all hosts and choose create host group and we're going to create a host group called Contoso just like the first line of the script highlighted. The next thing we're then going to do is drag each of the hosts individually, move them into the Coso, Contoso folder. We could have, of course, obviously right clicked on them and choose move host group as well to achieve the same results. So that completes the first lab exercise for course 10981. So we've effectively reviewed our configuration in Hyper-V, added a new host to the Hyper-V Manager, added that same host to Virtual Machine Manager, created a host group called Contoso and moved the machines into the Contoso host group.